Hi everybody, it's Rebecca Virginia, and today I have some rustic home decor DIYs to share with you. The first DIY in today's video is an adorable blue jean decor piece. All you need is an old pair of blue jeans and you can transform it into this piece of farmhouse decor. Here's what you need. I'm starting off with a sign that I actually got after the Christmas season. It's always really good to hit up your local Dollar Trees after the holidays because most of these signs are two for a dollar, so I got this great sign for only 50 cents. And I'm taking my Waverly chalk paint in the color, I think it's just called white, and I am painting the entire sign. Then I wanted it to kind of have a wood look to it, a little shiplappy, so I took some of my dark brown paint from Apple Barrel and I am just going all around the edges and kind of creating lines to mimic wood all down the center section of my sign. Once I had finished painting and I left all of that to dry, it was time to move on to the blue jeans section. So I am just taking an old pair of blue jeans, but you could also go to the Goodwill or a thrift store and get them for a couple bucks and use them that way if you don't have an old pair of jeans. And I am just cutting all around the pocket you want to make sure that you don't actually cut the inside portion of the pocket out because that's what we're going to be tucking the flowers into. I picked up these faux hydrangeas at the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to be tucking them down into the pocket. I kind of had the ones on the ends facing the sides and then I put two in the middle to kind of fluff up our jean pocket. Then I went in with some of these taller white flowers from the Dollar Tree and just stuck those in behind the faux hydrangeas. And I did adhere those down with some hot glue, but the hydrangeas stayed in place so I didn't have to use any hot glue on them. And for our sign holder, kind of keeping with the rustic theme, I took my trusty old jute and just made a hanger out of that. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to make these burlap flowers. They are so cute and really easy to do. So you can use actual burlap. I did that on the larger one, or you can take this burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And I took a piece about six inches. I didn't measure it, but you can measure it if you want to. I tried to go for six inches. And what you're going to do is pull the little strings that are running the long way. And this can take a while, but once you actually isolate the one string, they come out pretty easy. And once you get it going, you can see that I'm just removing all of those from the horizontal way going through our burlap ribbon. So once you have removed all of the burlap strands that are running horizontal, you are going to fold it in half. It's a little easier to do with the burlap ribbon because you do have that wire. The burlap fabric will be a little harder to work with, so if this is your first time, I would recommend the burlap ribbon because that wire does make things a little bit easier. And then once you have folded it in half, you are just going to start rolling it up. So the tighter, the better. If you have a little bit looser, it's gonna make a larger, more floppy flower. So depending on what kind of flower you wanna make, that is how tight you are going to roll up your burlap ribbon and then you're just gonna push them all down kind of like petals and take some hot glue and go ahead and stick a button in the center of your burlap flower. I also made one with some actual burlap fabric. I really like the way this came out too. It's a little bit darker of a color, but again, it's a tiny bit harder than the burlap ribbon because you don't have that wire. So I would suggest starting off with the ribbon. And once my burlap flower was complete, I took some hot glue and just hot glued it on to the center of our denim patch sign, kind of as the centerpiece. In today's video, I also wanted to share with you this amazing desk that FlexiSpot sent me. If you can't tell by the echo in today's video, I recently moved and I moved out of my apartment and into a house for the first time and I finally have an area that I can dedicate as a craft room. So I am so excited and fortunate that FlexiSpot sent me this desk. It is called the Esben Desk and what is so cool about it is that it's a desk that you can adjust the height of. It was so easy. It basically just had these three pieces. I just had to hook in the legs and then I have this control option and it even has memory. So if I want to, you know, 
set it low for one when I'm crafting and then maybe when I need to craft something higher, set that at level two. It's so awesome that I can adjust the height, no more bending over and hurting my back when I'm crafting. I'm so excited also that it has drawers. I'm going to store my most used craft items in here and I cannot wait to start using it. Again, this is the Esben desk from FlexiSpot. I will be sure to leave the link down below in the description box in case you want to check out this desk and maybe purchase it for yourself. Now let's get back into the crafts. I was challenged in today's video to create a DIY using clothespins, so I ended up making one using a whole lot of clothespins. Here are the other supplies you'll need to make this. This DIY is really easy and only uses like three supplies, so it's one that you can do really fast with not a whole lot of materials. And what I'm using is clothespins. So like I mentioned earlier, I was challenged to use a clothespin in today's video, and instead of just using one clothespin, I ended up using a whole lot of them. And I am taking a vegetable pan, actually I think it was a tomato sauce can, but either way it is an eight ounce vegetable pan. And I am just laying out all of my clothes pins. I'm going to be hot gluing them upside down. I really liked the ridges and different textures in them and found that when I did them upside down instead of right ways up, it just kind of looked better. So I'm taking my hot glue gun and just lining all the way around the can with these clothes pins. Today's video is part of the July Fab Five playlist created by the Crafting Cousins on YouTube. There is a giveaway associated with today's video. Two winners will win $50 Amazon gift cards. All that you need to do to be eligible to win is watch all five videos in the playlist and leave a comment on them. I will be sure to have the playlist linked down below so that you can check out everyone's videos and leave a comment to be entered. I wanted to keep this DIY rustic, so the only thing that I'm adding to this DIY is some jute. So I took some natural jute from the Dollar Tree and along all of the ridges, I am just filling them with jute. For the upper and bottom ridges, there was a little bit more room, so I went around about three times. And then for that very small ridge in the center, I just went around once with the jute. I really liked the natural colors of this DIY, but if you wanted to add in some color, you can go around the ridges with ribbon or maybe some pearl beads that they sell at the Dollar Tree. You can really make this your own and use whatever colors or materials that you would like to. I ended up using this DIY as a place to store some scissors and pencils and pens in my kitchen, but if you added the pearls, I think it'd be really cute to put makeup brushes in too. The last DIY in today's video is a mason jar sign with some faux flowers that I made out of some old blue jeans. Here are the other supplies you'll need to make this. To start off, I am taking a sign from the Dollar Tree and it is one of their beach signs. You'll have to let me know in the comments down below if your Dollar Tree ever got any of the beach stuff. I got this at a Dollar Tree in Virginia, but it was still like four hours from the beach, so I'm not sure why we got beach things. But yeah, let me know if your Dollar Tree ever did. But it doesn't really matter because we're going to be covering this sign. And since I already did the first sign using paint, I figured I would do something a little different with this one, so I'm taking some scrapbooking paper that I picked up from Hobby Lobby, and I just traced the sign out onto it, and then I'm going to be adhering this, I think it's supposed to be like a faux shiplap scrapbooking paper, and I just adhered that down with a glue stick. If you're good at drawing or sketching, then you can just go ahead and sketch out a mason jar on your sign. I'm not the greatest at drawing, so I just headed over to Google and I just put into Google mason jar image, and this is one that came up. So I printed it out in a size that I thought would fit my sign, and I am going a little bit old school. Instead of using a Cricut or any vinyl, I am doing this graphite method, and what you do is just cover the back of your image with a pencil, and you have to press pretty hard because you really want that graphite to show up on it and then you will just place the mason jar wherever you want it to be. And with a pen or a bit of a sharp tool, something that's gonna leave an impression, 
you are just going to trace out your image. And it's really cool because after you are done tracing out your image, when you pull back the paper mason jar, it will have a traced out version for you. To keep it rustic, I went ahead and used hot glue and jute, and I am just outlining the traced image. If you wanted something a bit more modern, you could go in with maybe some black or white paint or a marker. But again, I wanted to keep it a little rustic, so I decided to use jute and I just traced out the entire image. The actual flowers are going to be made out of denim, but I still wanted them to have stems. And this is why I can never throw away anything. These are stems from flowers that I used in a totally different DIY, I think way back in the fall. And I still had these and I knew that they would come in handy. So I went ahead and just hot glued those down. And this is also when I realized that I probably shouldn't have put the jute at the top of the mason jar, but I ended up going over it so that it looks like the flowers are actually inside the mason jar, not in front of the mason jar. Now I am moving on to making these really cute, very rustic Americana denim flowers. So I'm starting off by just cutting out a piece of denim, and this one was about six inches in length, but depending on the size of the flower or the thickness of it that you want to make, you will change up the sizing of it. And then I took hot glue and just made sure that when I folded it down, it was adhered. After your denim is adhered together, the part where it's actually folded and not just held together by the glue but the folded section, that is what you're going to be cutting through. The first time that I did this, I did it the opposite way and it still comes out really cute but if you want to make the exact flowers that I'm making in this video and have them have the loop at the end of them, then you're going to want to cut through that fold so that the loop stays intact. And next is very, very similar to the burlap flowers that we made earlier in this video. And you are just going to take the end of our denim roll and start rolling it. And I'm again pushing down the petals, kind of making the flower a little bit bigger and blossom and just adhering it in place with a little bit of hot glue. And then this flower I decided to leave as is, but I wanted to make another one for you all because I'm making a bunch of them. And just in case it was confusing, I'll show you one more time. So you're taking your denim. This is a scrap piece, so this would be a little denim flower. And again, I am making the cuts where the fold is so that the loop is maintained. And after I have made the cuts, I will just start rolling up the little denim into a flower. And I ended up making a bunch of these denim flowers. Same with the burlap flowers. I really like to do these when I'm watching either my favorite YouTuber or a TV show because they're just like a fun, easy task that you can do while you're watching TV. And I have a whole bag just filled with these whenever I want to use them on a project. And the one that is a little bit darker denim, I used with a ripped denim. I put a button inside of it and then I couldn't resist adding in one more little burlap flower in the center. This is also the point when I realized it looked like my flowers were somehow outside of the mason jar and not inside of it because I had put in the stems after. So I just went over the stems with some more jute so it really looked like the flowers were sitting inside of the mason jar. Let me know if you have ever made either burlap or denim flowers. My mom said she used to do these as a kid all of the time so I would love to know if you grew up making them too. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed all of the crafts in today's video. Until next time, keep searching, keep creating.